Consciousness and the Absolute by Sri Nizargadatta Maharaj Part 2 February 9th, 1981 My present state is such that this consciousness and all this physical suffering are unbearable. I am prepared to dispose of it right now. This is the state of affairs. Nevertheless, people come here and these talks emanate out of the consciousness. I am addressing you as consciousness. You are the godly consciousness. I am not concerned with your bodily affairs, but you listen from the body-mind standpoint. It is quite natural. I am telling you about the consciousness. In my true state, if I had been aware of consciousness at the moment the body formation was taking place, I would have rejected it. But at that highest state, such knowledge is not there, and this body formation and consciousness are both spontaneous. Maharaj, will you please explain how we can dive further into that consciousness? How long have you been following spirituality? For the last ten years. Who were your guides or gurus? Mostly I was reading. I had a guru in Delhi. Who is employing the body and the name given to it? That is what I want to discover. You need not go in search. It will be spontaneous, but you have to wait. I had to wait such a long time to meet you. I will wait. Now, understand the subtle difference. What you are and what do you understand to be you? The body is not you. The name is not you. The body is the food and you have consumed. The taste of it is the knowledge I am. That is self. The feeling I am. That is the love to be. How amazing, how incredible. It has no name, but you give many names to it. It is the self, the love to be. That love to be is all-pervading. Heaven, hell, countries, houses, these are all concepts. They were rock and earth. A concept was employed and buildings were built. Before you conceptualize anything, you are. Even before the knowingness, you are. You have only to apperceive this knowingness, the love to be, the self. You will be listening to such dialogues. Only the self in the body has the urge to understand. People hasten to this place, traveling from distant countries, leaving their families for the time being because the self wants to know itself. February 11th, 1981 I studied the five-jeweled ornament I have understood. It was a very precious gem and the ultimate product was that diadem. I have understood the value of that, but I am not that. The five gems are the five elemental body and consciousness, which I considered myself to be. It is very precious because it has the value of the cosmos. I recognize it, and in the process of recognition, I know that I am not that. Now I rarely speak, and when I speak, rarely does anyone understand. You might collect a lot of words, but they will remain with you. You are bereft of words, and the meaning of words. You are not a personality. That birth principle which gives rise to the consciousness is not conditioned. It has come spontaneously and manifest as consciousness. How caught up you are in the world. Until yesterday, you did not have knowledge of your existence. Today, you are loquacious. You are speaking so loudly and you claim that you are Brahman. I know that I have to understand all this play of consciousness and conclude that this is like the child of a barren woman. How are you going to catch that child of a barren woman? Just be in your beingness. February 12, 1981 Nothing in the world is of any use to me. That very identity with which you try to understand everything is unreal. Daily you have to convince yourself about yourself. You have to carry out your life. First of all, assuring yourself that you are. Nothing has happened except the knowingness. Only a pinprick of knowingness against the background of your innate nature of no knowingness. And this is of no help at all. I don't have any identity arising out of consciousness. 
Presently, this body is undergoing a lot of agony, dizziness, pain. All these things are happening at the physical level. In spite of this state, the talk comes out inspiringly. What permits that? It is the guna, the beingness. That beingness not only experiences your visits here, but it also experiences various changes and transformations in this body and in the world. Sometimes I experience the state of lying in some rubbish, and other times I experience that people are worshipping me. But that is all in the realm of consciousness. I realize this is all the outcome of that birth principle, I am. Will the space and the stars feel unhappy about the dirt in the world? It is part of the game in that universal space. Consciousness is subtler than space. You are bent on having knowledge at the most mundane level, but whatever knowledge you collect is bound to disappear. There is only one truth in the world, and that is that everything is unreal. I am the unmanifested talking to the manifest. When the body, the mind, the vital breath drop off, nothing happens. Only I, the absolute, prevail always. No knowledge is called for to understand this truth, because that knowledge is innate. What you have learned here will be your guide. The sprouting will take place. February 13th, 1981 I have so many questions to ask that it is chaotic. Your questions are regarding the concepts of others. Ask questions only regarding yourself. I don't know myself. How can I reach that point? How can I come to that? The fact that you do not know yourself is very appropriate. You are not the body, nor the name of the body. Therefore, how can you know yourself? How can I experience myself? Is it because of the body that you do not see yourself? Perhaps because I am. I am leading you in that direction. You are because you are, your world is. You are lost in the names and titles imprinted on that world. Give up the habit of labeling. Whatever you are, be what you were prior to the label or title. Be that. Is it intuitive, not of the mind? Don't employ the mind. Do nothing. Should you not be aware? That awareness will be there, provided you are. You must give up all you have read and heard and just be. Don't be carried away by concepts. Truth is eternal. Whatever you can grasp is unreal. Even your experience that you are is not your true nature. You, as the Absolute, are not this I amness. But presently you have to abide in your I amness. I feel afraid, because you have assumed something as I am, which actually you are not. That is why you are afraid. Suppose you find a diamond ring on the road and you pocket it. Since it is not yours, a fear overcomes you. When you put on an identity, that is not yours. You are afraid. When you are the pure I amness only, there is no fear. Presently you are this I am, but this I am is not the truth. Whatever you are prior to the appearance of I am, that is your true nature. February 25th, 1981 Each one lives in the world according to certain preconceived concepts. Whatever spiritual knowledge he thinks he may have achieved, he continues to live according to those concepts. What is it like to live with no concepts? Any answer given to you will be a concept. How can one know that he is beyond concepts? Merely to understand, without the slightest doubt, with great conviction, that there is a state prior to the arising of this consciousness. That itself is sufficient. How can one differentiate between just having the thought of it and living it? How do you understand anything? Any knowledge of any kind that you think you have can only be in the consciousness. How can the consciousness which came later give you any knowledge about that state which exists prior to its arrival? Any thought that you have reached or are going to reach that state is false. Whatever happens in consciousness is purely imaginary an hallucination. 
Therefore, keep in mind the knowledge that it is consciousness in which everything is happening. With that knowledge, be still. Do not pursue any other thoughts which arise in consciousness. What is necessary is to understand, with sure conviction, is that all is temporary and does not reflect your true state. February 27th, 1981 Could Maharaj speak on the relationship between body and spirit? You must get to know your own self. This body is not your true nature. The principle by which you know I am is your true nature. What responsibility do I have towards other people? You have built your responsibilities around the teachings which you have derived from the world. But what is that you which is accepting all the responsibility? You must understand that first. You are identifying yourself as a body. That is not self-knowledge. I don't always feel that I am the body. When I become still and concentrate, I realize that there is more than just flesh and blood there. It is a new realization for me. Have you come to the conclusion that there is no difference between different groups of people? Except that some people are more greedy and ambitious. I like to visit countries, meet various kinds of people with different customs. Don't roam about. Don't come here either. Abide in quietude, peace, stability. Here you are not engaged in any buying or selling. That knowledge I am, without concepts, is evoked or stimulated by the consciousness and peace which emanate from this place. That is why it is valuable to be with Maharaj. I am not able to speak much. Don't ask questions. If you want, you may go elsewhere. I have been with Maharaj before, and I have felt a profound effect from that visit. I understood more. Whatever the experiencer feels or thinks is all in consciousness and is not real. It is difficult for me to express. There is no individual looking at another individual. The sense of presence is cognizing. Other than that, there is nothing. This state of consciousness, cognizing what appears in consciousness, is being witnessed as a temporary state. The alternate states of waking, sleeping, and the sense of presence are all temporary states that have come upon me. I am not the states. They have all come spontaneously and will go spontaneously. No one has any control over them. Are any of these states your true nature? The sense of presence is what I feel I am. Will that remain permanently? You must understand that truth is not changeable. Truth is constant and eternal, whereas the combination of these three states has come upon you and were not there earlier. Whatever is temporary and time-bound cannot be the truth. It is good as far as it goes that you have identified with this sense of presence. But understand that even that is temporary and not your true nature. The most important thing for you is the I am. Just be that, and the necessary guidance will come. March 2nd, 1981 Maharaj has said that he used to think of himself as an individual, but now he does not, for that would be identification with the body. The fact that the body continues even afterward, I mean, the body is so strong that it can continue for a certain period, even after one realizes that he is not, Maharaj has said that when this sickness started, the last traces of individuality disappeared. What is your question? Is the identification with the body so strong? I mean, is it such a habit that one identifies with the body even after one knows what lies beyond? It is not identification as a person, as you think. The body is an aid for the manifestation of consciousness, for experiencing. So long as this consciousness exists, it needs an instrument. Without the body, consciousness cannot exist in that form. What is lost is the feeling of being a separate entity. A yani is like an unborn child. The consciousness is the child when it is born, and the child is sick. This material, objective body is sick. The yani cannot be sick. This body instrument is disturbed, and there is an imbalance 
Therefore I am not able to talk properly, nor walk properly. Only so long as you have a body do you know that you are. This applies to all other creatures also. When the body is, the knowledge, I am, is also there. As the ultimate, am I not aware of my being? To the absolute, the witnessing of this I amness happens. March 4th, 1981. How did you get this I amness? Did it come spontaneously, or did you try for it? As the absolute, you are free from all concepts, including the primary concept I am. Suddenly you were caught up in this I amness. Who did it? Has it not happened spontaneously? Yes, that is true. You did not have this concept I am in the course of the nine months in the womb. Understand this state of affairs. The concept I am comes spontaneously and goes spontaneously. Amazingly, when it appears, it is accepted as real. All the subsequent misconceptions arise from that feeling of reality in the I amness. Try to stabilize in that primary concept I am, in order to lose that and with it all other concepts. Why am I totally free? Because I have understood the unreality of that I am. I offer my salutations to all the prophets, creeds, religions, etc. I know they are not real. They are only the play of this consciousness. The truth, the eternal, cannot be witnessed. It ever prevails. And in your true state there are no words. But you think yourself important and you embrace many words. Poor human beings are caught between worldly life and spiritual life. One in a million understands all this play of consciousness, transcends it. What is death? Death is also a hearsay. Have you experienced death? Having followed the course of spirituality, you have come to the end of personality and there is no more human being. There is only impersonal consciousness. In this realm of consciousness, all that is going on is dynamic playfulness, a process of functioning. There is no differentiation in this process as to a person, an entity, a community, a creed, a religion. In the flash of your consciousness, all this play is going on. The play will come to an end. March 7th, 1981 in pursuing what Maharaj says, the result may be a type of behavior which will be considered peculiar in the world. Whose behavior? And considered peculiar by whom? All that is, is the essence of the five elements. By this apperception, the nature of the five elements is not going to change. The essence of the five elements is this momentary sense of presence, as compared to eternity. You come here with the sense of love and regard for me, and you will benefit to the extent of how you perceive me. If you continue to see me as an individual, that will be the extent of your benefits. If you see me as I see myself, and as I see you, that will be the further measure of your benefits. The real estate is that state which was prior to the arrival of consciousness. Very few will have reached that state. Most of you will not want to go beyond identification with an entity or a body. This identification which has been changing from infancy to your present state and which will continue to change in the course of time is purely seasonal. You identify with the body on the strength of hearsay. Your parents told you that you were born on a certain date and that this body is what you are. So based on hearsay you formed your identity with a certain image. You may think that now you have become Yanis and that you know your identity very well, but most often this is a case of sensory deception. Whatever your image of yourself, it is nothing but a concept. Just understand what you are and carry on your daily life to the best of your ability. Is daily puja worship being observed here? 
Yes, here the worshipper is the consciousness and the object of worship is also the consciousness. March 12, 1981 What arose first, I amness or desire? If the I amness is not there, what else can there be? This consciousness is in a state of flux, not stationary. If the power to manifest itself in that knowingness, I amness, have not appeared, no identification can take place. When that I amness appears and is accepted as real, it is conditioned or confined to a certain identity. I have dropped my identity. Who has dropped it? No one has dropped it. It dropped by itself. It was possible to observe the capacity of the brain not to register anything. If the non-reaction state was possible, consciousness would not arise. If consciousness is the only content of consciousness, then that knowledge is dropped. What is the necessity of its getting dropped? What was not will not be. That knowledge was not there earlier and is going to disappear. There have been so many teachings by the various saints who have appeared and disappeared. In these talks here, where are the references to Christ, Rama, Krishna, or others? Do we refer to them in our dialogue? There have been so many saints, sages, and yanis, and each one has been enamored of a particular concept that he wanted the world to know about. Ultimately, the different religions were only individual concepts, which appeared to the consciousness in a particular individual at a particular time. That is why we are here. When you came, was it not on account of your body-mind? Not only is the body-mind unreal, but this manifest consciousness, this universe, is also unreal. The I amness is dreamlike, ephemeral. Even the feeling of having understood is likely to lead one into a sense of illusion, because the individual thinks he has found something to impart to others. But there is no individual. It is so easy to get totally lost when juggling words by attaching too much importance to them. Just remember that the total functioning of the manifest happens through the fiction of the five elements, and the talking which takes place is a part of the total functioning. There is no question of anyone seeking a particular benefit for himself as an individual teacher. Man identifies with the gross form. He neither recognizes nor identifies with the manifest consciousness. All the activities go on because of the consciousness, but no one really understands it. When people come here, they have many questions, and they think after a while they know something, but when they finally know, there will be no questions to ask. March 13th, 1981 Everything happens out of your own self. This consciousness is spontaneously felt in the self only. This I is not an individual. What is, is the absolute unmanifested. What appears as if in a dream is the manifested relative world. And this experience of the dreamlike state is the same, an identical state for everyone. In this process of functioning that becomes manifest, if you accept something as an individual event, then it affects you as an individual. If you do not take delivery as an individual, but as total functioning, then you are free of whatever is happening. The knowledge of the self is this dreamlike feeling of I amness. By assuming a separate identity, one taints that which is taintless. That is the original sin. Go to the very root. Who are you? What are you? You are the product of the five elements. You have taken the support of the five elements. Your feeling of I amness emanates from the five elements. Focus your attention at that point. What change should occur in you so that you realize yourself? What change could happen to you? When you come here, you must be expecting something to happen. What change do you expect in yourself so that you may say, 
I have now attained what I sought. I need not go to Maharaj any more. With reference to what state are you speaking? What is that state? In that dreamlike state, I am not keeping a record of anyone coming here, nor of any conversations among us. March 21st, 1981 If someone understands the truth, does this have any effect on the world at large? The first thing that happens is that the individuality is lost, and whatever happens then is seen as total functioning. The understanding of the total functioning cannot be divided. There is no question of I or you understanding something. It is understanding. This knowledge is not found in books. It is not intellectual knowledge. Although this consciousness functions through millions of forms, it is one and the same consciousness. We have this conviction that I am, I exist. I am alive. That conviction is because of the consciousness. And consciousness is not aware of itself unless the body is there. So what is the relationship? Consciousness is the taste of this physical form. If the form is not there, the taste is not there. The body is the essence of food and the consciousness is the essence of the physical form. If this is properly understood, is there any individuality? This individuality is a process of manifestation. Why does the consciousness want to preserve itself in a particular form? When the consciousness identifies itself with a form, it is the nature of this identity to want to continue as long as possible. Consciousness loves that identification so much that it wants to continue. If this individuality is lost, will consciousness still want to continue? Once consciousness has lost its individuality and has become one with the universe, it will have no need to continue. March 24th, 1981 If you sit here quietly, being one with the knowledge I am, then you are not concerned with the world or what goes on in the world. It is only when the consciousness starts operating and there are various movements in the consciousness that the behavior in the world takes place. When I am not conscious of the existence of the body, experiences are not registered. Just as the universe is contained in consciousness, so too this physical body is merely an appearance in consciousness, perceived and cognized by consciousness. No amount of effort can make you understand this. Only the deepest apperception of this in consciousness will make that experience happen by itself. Anyone in that condition where the consciousness is present but the registration of the existence of the body is not, even in that state the conditions and the body change constantly. All of this is an appearance in consciousness. Therefore, consciousness has to suffer all of the changing conditions. In that state, any number of events happen, but all that is really happening is a total functioning against the background of this void, which in reality is really consciousness. There is no separate identity. What is, is this consciousness? Apart from that, no one can exist. When you are very quiet, you have arrived at the basis of everything. That is the deep, dark blue state in which there are millions of stars and planets. When you are in that state, you have no awareness of your existence. March 29th, 1981 If the consciousness in all the different forms is identical, then why do thoughts and actions differ from one human being to another? The thoughts and actions belong to the body-mind, and the body-mind is the essence of the five elements. The nature of the form depends on the various degrees of the five elements and the three gunas. The thoughts and deeds depend on the conditioning received right from the time the consciousness is there. Without the consciousness, there would be only dead forms. Consciousness and the body are kept in working condition by the food and medicine that we imbibe. In each 
form the thoughts, words, and deeds depend not only on the conditioning the form has received after it has been created, but they depend on even earlier conditioning at the time of conception. The consciousness was latent in that birth chemical. How amusing it is that one identifies with the body. How long have you been following spirituality? For forty years, I was following the Who Am I of Ramana Maharshi. I have read the book of Maharaja's teachings. So far, so good. What do you understand about your own self? What are you? Consciousness. The ultimate is prior to any experience. I amness is the beginning of experience. On the ultimate, there appeared this knowingness, and the question arose. Who or what am I? That feeling of being is not colored by form. It is just a feeling of being, of I amness. That was the first experience. This is Maya. Because you don't get the answer to who am I, you give the reply that this is Maya. You cannot catch it by a reply. With what do you identify? I am the Brahman. This is not your direct experience. You are just repeating what you have read or heard. What do you think you are? I have experienced. The experience can be there when the I amness is there. But prior to this experience, I am. What was the state? I do not know. I am talking to you because you have the wisdom to understand. Can I stop this I amness and be before the I amness? What natural processes can you stop? Everything is spontaneous. Presently, you are in the consciousness which is stirring, vibrant. Don't think you are something separate from this stirring, vibrant consciousness. You are part of the play of this consciousness. You, the consciousness, are the product of the food consumed. At the level of active consciousness, which is self, and which is in activity, there cannot be identity of a body. How can I be convinced of this? When you remain still in yourself, then you receive the conviction. You stay in quietude. April sixth, nineteen eighty-one. While I am sitting here putting questions to you, I feel at peace. Is it not a landmark showing progress? What are you talking about? You are talking from the kindergarten level. I am not going to address you as a student of the Mumuksha class. I am going to address the class of Sadaka. How long have you been practicing spirituality? Since childhood, because my family has been practicing spirituality for generations. Therefore, I have a hobby of spirituality. Very good. Nevertheless, you are still at the kindergarten level. The only solution for you is to give up your identity with the body mind. I know all of this intellectually, but I am not experiencing it. So I came for satsang. What do you mean by satsang? This is merely a conventional spiritual jargon. Now you go from here with the firm conviction that I am the Brahman, without any shape, form, or design, and without any mental inclinations. I am the manifest consciousness. When you realize that you are formless, there is no caste or creed for you. There are no concepts left. The mumokshu is in kindergarten, spiritually inclined, but identifying with the body mind. The sadaka is one who has disidentified with the body mind. Siddha is one who has stabilized in the knowledge I am, and in the process has transcended it. In this journey, you know very well where you are. This young man's mother was on her deathbed, but I said with conviction that she was not going to die. This was some years back, and today she is still alive. His mother was so convinced that she was going to die that she had purchased the particular flowers which she liked for her funeral. I ordered her to get up and go and prepare tea for me. At that time, my attitude was that of I am the Brahman. Today, that attitude is discarded. I had the firm conviction that whatever I tackled would take shape, would happen. At this very place, many things happened. Bajans have been going on here since 1932. I was the first tenant in the Van Mali building. People would come here hoping to get their problems solved, and when I would ask why they had come, they would simply state their problems. I would tell them 
The very fact that you have come here means that your problem is bound to be solved. You can go. Now all of you are coming. Who is drawing you here? It is your own beingness. You are attracted to this place because of a certain quality in you. You are stabilizing in the highest state. It is not a worldly attraction which brings you here. Neither you nor anybody else knows anything about this attraction. The attraction for you is to be in your eternal dwelling place. That is your home. When that attraction is there, you come here. Scientists have been talking of the black hole into which everything in the universe finally goes. You are that absolute. You swallow the entire universe. April 10th, 1981 There is only the slightest touch of I amness left. Henceforth, people will be able to have only darshan. There is not much chance of talking. Whatever faith you entertain about me, that will stabilize in you. It is not the darshan, but your faith in the darshan. Unusual, rare, strange, astonishing, non-phenomenal. This is the kind of benefit you will receive. The ultimate faith in the self. Total faith. Whatever you see, don't see it as a mere body. These are truly the limbs of that highest imperceptible principle that is expressing itself. These limbs have reached the highest. I am convinced. Now that conviction is so strong for you that it can never be broken. It is total, complete, imperishable. April 11th, 1981. The core of this consciousness is knowingness, to know, I am. It is not a personality, not an individual. It is total manifestation. Beingness is there. It fills everything. Nevertheless, this quality I am is the result of the material objective body. In the seed, the whole tree is latent. In the droplet, I am. All three worlds are squeezed in. The highest state is the state of Iyani. The first step is to be that droplet. In the process of knowing that droplet, you are out of it. And that is Ayani. Ayani is not obsessed by any calamities or any problems because he has transcended the I am principle. He watches the play as a witness. Now understand clearly, this droplet of knowingness is a result of the food essence body. In understanding it, you are out of it. If this last step is taken, knowing that I, the Absolute, am not that droplet, the consciousness, it has to happen only once. There is no more involvement with the play of consciousness. You are in a state of no return, the eternal state. Whatever you think of as spiritual knowledge was gained in the realm of consciousness. Such knowledge is merely a burden upon your head and it is going to add more misery. It is nothing more than spiritual jargon. This I amness is the very source of all misery. Are you in such a position that you cannot employ any words to express yourself? When I answer your questions at such great length, you should be reduced to a quietude out of which no words can come. I expound this knowledge completely and thoroughly. Have you the courage to accept it? If you have really understood what I have told you, you need not come again. Do not try to tell these things to all and sundry. Just don't speak of this elsewhere. April 22nd, 1981 The whole universe is experienced in the consciousness I am. If that is not there, what else can ever exist? This consciousness is beating a drum. Everyone is carried away by the noise of the drum. Who looks for the drummer? Who is sounding and beating the drum? It is so amazing that no one casts even a glance at this speck of consciousness. When I stabilizing consciousness, is that meditation? Who is stabilizing? Is it not the consciousness itself? This one, Jean Dunn, has understood her nature. It is all due to her faith in the Guru. Everything that has any concern with me is sacred to her. Unless you have such faith in the Guru, you do not attain faith in yourself. 
Some people go about to this swami and that swami for what? To lick at their leftovers. If they lick their own leftovers, how much better it would be. Stick to your own consciousness. Remain in that. All the burdens of your concepts should fuse into your consciousness. But do not use your consciousness to build up the edifices of concepts. Habit is a great force which makes one stray, isn't it? The habit of considering self as the body has influenced everybody too much. The knowledge I am is your guru. Be in it. Who is the one who sings the bhajan? It is the intellect of that guru. Who are you? An intruder? Of course, the action of the whole world depends on this intellect, but when this intellect reaches its apex, it gets merged into Parabrahman. You all go on writing a diary of your own concepts. I tell you, finally, it is utterly useless. It will only serve as an instrument of bondage. June 5th, 1981 you know that you are. How has this happened? Because of what do you know that you are? You have to go to the source. One hundred years earlier, you did not know your own existence. You had no problems at that time. Now, because of this knowingness, all the problems have started. This I amness has appeared because of the body. So, what knowledge do we have about the body and what knowledge of this I ness? When the body falls, when the person is dead, do the memory and the consciousness remain? Both the memory and the consciousness are the quality of the food body. When the body is not present, there is no question of their remaining. The I amness is a quality of the food body. But that is not the nature of the true self. What is Turiya? Turiya means that only you remain. Nothing else remains. So long as you know that you are, everything is. Find out what you are, and you will get all the answers. Find out the source of the body and the source of this I amness. If you find this out, you will know what you are. Whatever changes is not yourself. This body is continuously changing. It was not there, it appeared, and it will disappear. It is not you. Find out what you are. The important thing is the consciousness. You must give your full attention to the consciousness itself. That is the process of meditation. Then all the secrets will be revealed to you by the consciousness. The consciousness likes that self-love. If you are interested in the consciousness only, you will come to know it. If you are interested in the world, then it means you are not interested in the consciousness. If you are interested only in the consciousness, then the consciousness will unmask all the secrets and then you will know what you are. This you will know who you are. But awareness means pure consciousness, and there is no I there. Watching yourself, that itself is meditation. To keep only consciousness without mixing it with anything, that is the knowledge without words that you are. Thoughts will be there, but they will be weaker and weaker, so only the feeling of I amness will remain. Just consciousness without any activity. Watching your activities is on a lower level, like watching anger, etc. That is identification with the body mind. Does Maharaj feel his body? I come to know that everything is through the consciousness, just as I see you. I look at this body, but I am apart from it. I am not identified with the body. Consciousness is not male or female. It is like light. Light also means heat. When the temperature goes down, the doctor will say that the patient is no more. What about reincarnation? Even this birth is false. The quality of I amness is because of the body. You don't know whether you exist or not in deep sleep. You don't know you are. That is all. You are not born at all. Only the announcement of your existence is there. You existed even prior to your birth. Your existence is eternal. But the knowledge that you existed came about when you were a few years old. Just worry about this birth. 
Why worry about reincarnation? Think whether this birth is correct. June 7, 1981 How can one control the mind? You accept only good and discard the evil and continuously recite the name of God. That will help you gradually control the mind. What is acceptable to you and gives you peace is good. What your mind rejects is not good. When you do something and there is fear of failure, that means the mind is not pure. How does one develop a liking for chanting the mantra? In the company of the sages you can develop it. From 5 p.m. to 6 p.m., what goes on? Consciousness comes to meet consciousness. There will be no other talk except some communication between consciousness itself. There will be no other strange third person or individual meddling in there. God has come to meet God. You know that whatever sentiments arise, you are not those. June 9th, 1981 Rajneesh is not a small personality or small principle. He is tremendous. He is very big. He is a great sage. When you already have a guru, Rajneesh, why do you visit other sages? Since you already have a great sage as your guru, you should not sit here or come here. I do not like those shiftings from gurus to gurus. I do not like wanderers. What is the difference between Maharaj and Rajneesh? Once you remove the letters, that is, the names, what is the difference? You investigate the wanderer's eye before you investigate others. What is the product after you remove its name? What are you without the name or the label? You investigate the investigator. Investigate I am. Before you take up the assignment of inquiring about others, inquire about yourself first and see if you are real or unreal. The letters I am are written spontaneously with a certain ink. What is that ink which was used to write that which you are? In that ink with which the letters I am are written, in that ink the title of Tej Sesh Bhagavan is confirmed by the Vedas. Sesh means the leftover, the remains. What is the leftover that means what you are? One who has understood one's mystery as to what is, that one will not discuss or argue the largeness or smallness of anybody. You have become a slave to a concept, and having become a slave to one concept, you are fully involved and are immersed in more concepts. You are drowning in concepts. Having got caught up with the concept that you are, the first concept, you started giving names and titles and ideas to others, and you became enmeshed therein. Although one may call oneself a yani, one enjoys entertaining himself with a number of concepts. Although such a one knows full well that he is not going to get anywhere, still one becomes busy with a number of concepts. That Taj Sesh Bhagavan, has spontaneously come and will spontaneously go. What are you going to get for yourself as I am? In what position or concept did you stabilize yourself as I am? The firm conviction that I am this, the three states, waking state, deep sleep, and the knowledge I am, are aspects of that Tej Sesh Bhagavan. You are not that. Then who am I? The prominent and firm reply is only you are. You throw the hooks with bait into the water to catch fish. In that way, with the concept that you are, throw in the bait and haul in lots of concepts for yourself. So when the question followed by the answer is there, then anything which is refused, what remains is that rejection. Prior to any other recognition, you already are. If you are not, other people are not. You are supporting yourself on the intellect of the body and having stabilized in the body or the intellect, you are creating or inviting a lot of concepts. And in the concepts, you are bogged down. You are talking about others. Let me know what you are. I am asking about you. What are you? You, the observer. 
Maharaj knows I do not know what I am. Why is he asking me? I am not talking to you. Consciousness is talking to consciousness about consciousness. Who told you that Maharaj is talking to you? Your basis itself is wrong. One appearance noticed another appearance of a fly. That is why this automatic gesture, if I understand what I am, that is merely an appearance, then I will know the others are appearances also. Therefore, I will have no questions, arguments or quarrels with them. But if I don't understand myself, and if I ride on the wings of a concept, then I prefer my appearance. Since Maharaj is only talking to consciousness, he will not talk to my ignorance. Ignorance will remain there for all time, just as knowledge also will remain for all time. There cannot be knowledge without ignorance, and there cannot be ignorance without the correlated knowledge. Both are the opposites in manifestation. One cannot remain without the other. Even this concept about knowledge is merely a concept. With the Yani, there is no concept of either ignorance or knowledge. The total absence of all knowledge or ignorance is that state prior to the arising of consciousness. But you try to interpret whatever I say with various concepts and you condition yourself with all these concepts. Maharaj is taking everything away from me. I have nothing to hold on to. I will fall. You will be broken into how many pieces with that fall? With all that? Do what you like. Another person is searching for himself, but you are hiding. What is reality? Whatever is permanently there, immortal, unchanging, the eternal ever is, a non-experiential state. Subsequent to that is the consciousness, I amness, the body experience and life. Your experiences are in the realm of consciousness. In the realm of consciousness, you cannot have the experience of truth. As a matter of fact, there can be no experience of truth because you are that in the ultimate analysis. How can there be the experience of truth? It is prior to the beingness. What can one do for the continuance of that experience? No experiences are permanent. You are the permanent. Experiences are there in the realm of consciousness which is bound by time. How does one go beyond time? How did you come? Experiencing things happens unconsciously or spontaneously. Knowingly you cannot go into that. Can we come out of it knowingly? You want to step out? You must know exactly what is time and what is you. You must get to know that first. What is your step? You want to step out of time? What is time? Time is desire. Not at all. Time means space. There is separation in space. Whatever you have placed before Maharaj as knowledge are all mistaken concepts. Do you have the knowledge that birth means misery? Pain of birth, not the knowledge. Just by playing with words and concepts you will not be emancipated. What should one do? Don't even accept the concept that you have to do anything. What should I do with the pain? The way it has come, it will go. Have I to become idle? Jump about. You understand what I say, but you are afraid that whatever so-called knowledge you have collected is being devalued. Krishnamurti said whatever he has said, very rightly, but do you assimilate it thoroughly? Whatever Maharaj tells you, you try to absorb it through concepts. June 10th, 1981 When I meditate, I fall asleep. What can I do to overcome that? Don't raise this problem at all with me. You are in the three states, the waking state, deep sleep state, and the knowledge you are. So why are you dealing with the state which you are not? Why are you interested? It is spontaneously happening. You have to understand that when you are being stabilized in a state prior to waking state, deep sleep, prior to words, and even prior to consciousness, something happens in your body state without your doing it. Leave it alone. Don't ask questions about that. You are on this side, and if something is happening, why are you worried about it? 
Be yourself. If you are yourself, you need not worry about what is happening at the other end. You are interested in your experiential state. There are so many experiences, such as I saw blue light, I went up, etc. Don't tell me of all those things. Be yourself and not the experiences. This is also a temporary phase and you are giving it undue importance by saying, Oh, it is something. It happens naturally. There was a gentleman who came to me and he told me he would start crying and sobbing for about ten minutes when he meditated. He thought it was a very great thing that happened to him in the process of self-realization. What is the point of getting excited and saying, Oh, I started crying. So what? You are not the one crying. You are not your emotions, are you? So many people come to Maharaj to tell him of the spiritual experiences which they have undergone through meditation. Just to show people, I am something. When you fall into sleep, be alert and remind yourself that I am the manifest Brahman. At that moment, on the borderline, during the course of sleep, transcendence is prior to mind and continues during sleep also. If you fall into sleep reciting japa and at midnight you wake up, you will find that japa continuing. If you are alert, be aware of yourself and you will see light in the deepest recesses of your core. June 11, 1981 What do you know about your body? What is it and what are you? Body is the form or shape. The taste of the food body is the knowledge I am. What is your identity which you feel or experience in this body? Your words are all right, but are you the words? You are wearing the clothes, but are you the clothes? There is no permanent form. The body continuously changes. So long as you identify yourself with the body, you will not have satisfaction. This is the space. I am, not the space. You must have the firm conviction about your own self. You must have that deep urge to know yourself. Grace is always there. Your first conviction that you are, which is prior to words, to that you have given the form of a body. Give up this bodily, identity. Prior to words you are. Just be that. Now can I be that? Whatever you are, don't give it any shape or design. That is all. If you are, then everything else is. Worshipping books and being devoted to books will lead you nowhere. Be yourself. Be devoted to yourself. Worship only that. Worship the knowledge I am as a God as your guru. Do you see the image of yourself in the mirror first, or do you know you are prior to that? Which is first? If you are not, can you see your image in the mirror? Give up trying to evaluate the real eye or the counterfeit eye, but associate the eye with the Brahman. I am the Brahman. Whatever you have heard is good enough for you. No further listening to any such knowledge is necessary. Whatever you have listened to so far is good enough for you if you imbibe that and abide in it. Nothing more will be available to you. You are the Brahman in totality. Nothing more. Unfortunately, you have conditioned yourself to believe that you, the Brahman, are the body. Now you know that you are not the body. Why are you overwhelmed by that counterfeit bodily identity I? You have a lot of knowledge, but it pertains to the practical world. So far, you have not got the knowledge of the self. I will not talk about the worldly knowledge. It does not end here. This is the world. The world is covered by space. The knowledge of space is there. The space is contained in the knowledge I am, and prior to I am is Chittakash. Chittakash, I amness, is the source of the universe. Chittakash is the root of the mind's space. There can't be any knowledge of I am like this or I am like that. You cannot be like this or like that. Because of the Chittakash, Mahakash, the great space, is there. 
The space of the world is there because of the space of the mind, or prior to the mind. One space is covered by more subtle and more expansive space. At the base of that space is the knowledge I am. If one abides in the Chittakash knowledge, one will realize that one has no birth and no death. June 14, 1981 Continuous daily activity is making the mind dull. I want to know how to make the mind alert. I do not speak about the body-mind and what goes on in the world. I talk only about your true nature, and your true nature is the sense of presence you have, this consciousness. If you are not conscious, then there is no world for you. There is nothing there. The world exists for you only when you are conscious. So it is about this consciousness, this sense of presence, that I talk. Once this sense of presence comes, how you act and what you do in the world I don't deal with. The sense of presence, this consciousness, is it not prior to anything else? Even thinking about anything for which you have to use your mind if you are not conscious, can any thought come? Therefore, this sense of presence, this consciousness, is it not the primary thing without which nothing else can happen? Nothing, no thoughts, no concepts can arise by themselves. No activity can arise if the sense of presence is not there. The sense of presence does not need any activity of the mind to know that you are present. You do not have to ask yourself, Am I present? Am I conscious? There is that intuitive sense of presence. You know you are present. This sense of presence is not the sense that I am present, you are present, or any individual is present. The sense of presence is the sense of presence as such, because one identifies oneself with his body. He thinks he is born and is going to die. What is born is the general sense of presence as such. The sense of presence which has come spontaneously will leave spontaneously. There is no individual except through identification with the body. The sense of time, or duration, or the event happening in time, all that can come about only if there is consciousness. If there is no consciousness, do you have the sense of time? There is the wick, and there is the fuel. Only then can the light be there. So light depends on the duration of the fuel. That is how the time factor comes in. The sense of presence, this consciousness, is everything. So find out how that arises and how long it is going to last. Just as the light will remain, only as long as there is fuel for it. So this consciousness will last only so long as this fuel is there. Fuel being the body, which is made of the five elements which are an accumulation of food. If the food is not supplied constantly to the body, the body will not last. And if the body will not last, then the consciousness will not last. Therefore, this consciousness will depend on how long the body is there. Even this consciousness is not everything, and it is not going to last for all time. Find out how that consciousness has arisen, the source of the consciousness. What is this body? The body is only the accumulation of food and water. This food and water are certainly not you, and this consciousness is merely the nature of this food and water. Therefore, you are something separate from either the body or the consciousness. So long as the body is there. Anyone who considers himself an individual has as his only capital, the sense of presence, this consciousness. Treat that as the highest God and worship nothing else other than the sense of presence. And when you are one with the sense of presence, then whatever is necessary by way of spiritual knowledge will sprout by itself. If you have any problems or questions with which you are concerned, you will find these problems and questions 
are based in your identity with the body and mind as an individual. If that identification is not there, then no questions can arise. You will come to this conclusion. June 16, 1981 Each one does his own work, but each has his own quality. Here are some tests to know whether you are on the spiritual path or not. Investigate what you are thinking of during the 24-hour day. You say you got the knowledge of the self? You have collected the knowledge of the self? Nevertheless, during the whole day, what are you discussing inside, in your mind flow? You are discussing all your daily affairs. You don't discuss the way the discussions are going on here about your identity, about what you are. That you don't discuss. Is there anybody who discusses with himself only about the self? You are according to the quality of the intensity of your thinking. I also am restless. The type of pain and misery I am now undergoing, nobody else in my place experiences in the world. This talk is not for the consumption of all. Beyond the realm of consciousness arising from the body, there is no experience of consciousness. I want to talk about the state beyond the realm of consciousness. There are millions of names, but all these names relate to the objective world. Even the title of parents is also due to the bodies. As a result of the body, this title of parents has arisen. I want you to understand clearly that without the bodily consciousness, there is no Brahman. The Brahman is because the consciousness is, and consciousness is because the body is. The body consciousness is the result of the five elements. Body consciousness and the world are not different. They are identical. Ponder over this in this fashion. Whatever is grasped by the mind and intellect, is this the objective world? Although you have heard these talks, still you will be carried away by your conceptual experiences. This body is made of food. But what is your true identity? It is something like the body having completely adjusted, like the grains which you have stored being completely adjusted. This is food only. This is the food body and the consciousness. The Absolute is your true identity. I have given you some indication of the Absolute. You have not surpassed the consciousness, and consciousness is the first step. Total consciousness is not the end. June 18, 1981 People come here because they feel there is a need to come. The consciousness in your body feels pleasure in coming here. So long as consciousness feels the need of anything, you will be compelled to do it. When consciousness leaves, there will be no more bondage. Other than this sense of presence, which we have because of consciousness, what has anybody got? The real happiness without its counterpart can only be there when consciousness leaves. So long as consciousness is there, so long as happiness and unhappiness are there, pure happiness can only be there when consciousness is not there. Whatever can be perceived is totally different from what I am. I have understood my Swarupa, and I am that. It has nothing to do with whatever is manifested. You can never isolate yourself from the consciousness unless consciousness is pleased with you and gets rid of you. Consciousness opens the gate for you to transcend consciousness. There are two aspects. One is conceptual. Dynamic consciousness which is full of concepts. And the other is transcendent consciousness. Even the concept I am is not there. Conceptual, qualitative Brahman, the one that is full of concepts and is qualitative, is the outcome of the functioning body. This consciousness is dead to me. It is gone. I have transcended that. So whatever is, is that other consciousness that one which is without concepts. The principle that is conceptual and full of qualities, which I have transcended, was like a very big ocean. 
Now it is mostly dried up. Just the dregs remain. Only a very little bit is still there. Only a few particles. What is pervading and prevailing is without concept or quality. What remains is talking to you now. Where is the question of birth or death for that remaining principle? You, with your wisdom, are stuck here. You are sticking to certain concepts. If you had no concepts, why should you come here? You study only those concepts which arise from within you. Those concepts which you do not like will not occur in you. Suppose you do not like mathematics. That subject will not appeal to you. It is a stranger to your concepts. You will be involved in only those subjects or matters which you like. Analyze your thoughts and see if this is not true. Find out the nature of your thoughts. Are they spiritual? I abide in the state where there is no mind. June 19th, 1981 All happenings are only in body consciousness. Personalities only exist in body consciousness. The usual knowledge is concerned only with the body image. You are not the body. You are the consciousness. There is no imprint of personality. It is the manifest consciousness which is functioning. This dynamic manifest consciousness is always in a fluid state. What will happen, no one can say. This dynamic consciousness does not have any concept that something good or bad is going to happen. It is just happening. No one is doing it. The message, I am, is there. The mind flow is also there. It is not a personality. It is the consciousness. The very idea that you are the body is ridiculous. The consciousness is experiencing its manifestation. A rare being will realize this. The worldly life of a yani means the total functioning of consciousness. Normally, a person who is always thinking of others as personalities will not think of others simply as a function in consciousness. The play of consciousness will not come down to an individual level. It is quite different. It is manifestation only. Are you not a disciple of a great sage? How many years have you been going to him? For seven or eight years. Then why did you come here? I wanted to have your darshan. I wanted to meet you. When you are stabilized in your own self, then there is no otherness. You are everything. If you abide in yourself, you are like space and there is no duality left. You are as expansive and as subtle as the space, and that is liberation. You are not conditioned by any name or form. If you are like space, what is the point of going elsewhere? The space which is here is also everywhere else. Spirituality is not a child's play. My sentences will tear to pieces the doubts of anyone who listens to them. First of all, you abide in your own self and transcend it, and in transcending you will realize your ultimate. The words emanating here are not borrowed knowledge, which is available in the scriptures and other books. This is from direct experience. Nirupana means the normal practice of these professional, spiritual people. They will be expounding knowledge from various books. You must thoroughly understand what you are, or what you could be when nothing is. When nothing is, you still are. What is that you? It is all one, and when everything is, still you are. That is understandable, but when nothing is, how can I be? June 21st, 1981 AM Any image you have of yourself is not true. True knowledge is to abide in your own self. Try to understand all this knowledge which you are now gathering. The so-called knowledge you get elsewhere talks only about ignorance. It cannot talk about the self, true knowledge. All of what is pursued by the mind is not true knowledge. True knowledge cannot be understood easily. If I had the experience I am before, would I care to enter the womb of my mother? 
Prior to entering the womb, I did not know myself. There was no knowledge of I amness. All so called knowledge is tainted by words, which is only ignorance. You, the Absolute, watch the waking state. You know the consciousness. You know the sleeping state. Therefore, you are not that. Among the millions of people who have come and gone, where am I counted among them? There is no individuality connected with any of those forms. But I have always been, and I am, the total functioning. Without me, the functioning cannot take place. I am the total functioning every moment, millions of years ago or now. In spite of my clearly understanding the foregoing, the bodily suffering has to be undergone because of the consciousness. The name of the consciousness is suffering itself. The life of suffering is nearly over. Whatever this principle is, together with the body and consciousness, it is experiencing all the sufferings and knows itself that it is worth millions of dollars, like a cake of gold. This principle, which has understood and realized what the suffering and the consciousness is, is worth millions. I do not follow the spirituality of the masses. In this place, spirituality of the common type will not be doled out to you. That ultimate can never be lost. Whatever you have lost, you have lost only the words. The ultimate you knows or feels I am without words. Through this I am comes the world knowledge. You are not in isolation. You are part and parcel of the world knowledge. Jivatman is the one who identifies with the body mind as an individual separate from the world. The Atman is only beingness, or the consciousness which is the world. The ultimate principle which knows this beingness cannot be named at all. It cannot be approached or conditioned by any words. That is the ultimate state. I do not want meek and humble disciples. I want them to be powerful as I am. I do not make disciples. I make gurus. I want you to jump in the test tube in the process of this investigation. June 21st, 1981, PM. How can I stay stable in awareness? You know you are. That itself is awareness. If you think that you have to be aware, then it becomes an experiential state. You want to experience something. Don't recognize your body as yourself. That is all right for your daily worldly affairs, identifying with the body. But when you have to understand yourself, don't understand that you are the body. You have the knowledge, I am. That itself means you are. Awareness is that state in which the consciousness subsides into itself. This body is the expression of the product of the food consumed. Material is consumed in the form of food, and this is the result. When the food becomes less and less, the body is bound to become emaciated, become thin. This is not your identity. This is not your image. This body is a tiffin box. Why has this face gone lean? Because the food supply has been reduced. The food body you are not. The waking state you are not. The deep sleep state you are not. You know the waking state. Since you know the waking state, you are not the waking state. You know the deep sleep state. Therefore, you are not the deep sleep state. I am lost. That ultimate you can never be lost. Whatever you have lost, you have lost only the words. Who told you that you are lost? You know you are. I am. The moment the feeling I am appears, the world also appears. You are is not alone. In isolation, you are part and parcel of the world knowledge. In the consciousness hierarchy, there are three stages. One, Jivatman, is the one who identifies himself with the body-mind. One who thinks, I am a body, a personality, an individual part from the world. He excludes and isolates himself from the world as a separate personality because of identification with the body and the mind. Two, 
next only the beingness or the consciousness, which is the world. I am means my whole world, just being and the world. Together with the beingness, the world is also felt. That is Atman. 3. The ultimate principle that knows this beingness cannot be termed at all. It cannot be approached or conditioned by any words. That is the ultimate state. The hierarchy I explain in common words like, I have a grandson, that is Jivatma, I have a son, and I am the grandfather. Grandfather is the source of the son and grandson. The three stages cannot be termed as knowledge. The term knowledge comes at beingness level. I have passed on to you the essence of my teachings. With what identity do you recognize yourself now? With what identity do you come into this world? With what identity would you like to quit this world? Normally people cling to this bodily identity, but now I have thrown overboard this identity. You are not the body. I am asking, what are you? What? would be your identity now, since you are not the body. Whatever you would say in words would be incorrect, would be wrong. You are tenaciously clinging to the body as yourself. You must have a firm conviction that you are not the body, and not even the consciousness and the beingness. Experiment upon yourself. You are witnessing the stick, and you are telling the stick, I am witnessing you. Nothing is useful. No talk is useful when one is by oneself. When one subsides in one's true identity, nothing matters because nothing is. When I subsides, it's all awareness. January 22nd, 1981 AM. This consciousness and I amness are due to what? What is the basic material necessary for that to sprout? It is the five elements, three gunas and prakriti purusha. All those result in this space I am. What do you have except memory? The memory is the result of the five elements and these three gunas, the eight aspects. So when that basic material is available, only then is memory there, memory of anything. And finally, most important, the memory that you are. Presently, the feeling that you are is also a memory. To sustain that memory of I am, all these raw materials are necessary. You are not that I am. You are as the absolute prior to this I am. This I amness is the product of these raw materials. But you, as absolute, are not that. At the most you might say, I am, but what is this I am? I is merely a word. In the first instance there are words, and then there is merely a memory. Memory you are not. Who has been able to retain his memory as I am? Once all that raw material has gone, where is that memory I am? Your most essential step is to stand firmly in your identity as the dynamic manifest consciousness principle. You stabilize only there. This is your first step. There is nothing else but the knowledge that you are. Just be that, nothing more, nothing less. One cannot see rays of light as such. They reflect only when they encounter another object. Similarly, I amness is the interruption because of these five elements and three gunas. That is why the feeling I am is felt. But without the feeling of I am, still you are. Light itself emanates from the sun. Everything is stored, the five elements are there, therefore it is reflecting as the sun. Brightness is seen as the sun because something is there. If something were not there, the rays of light would be spread all over and become invisible as a source of light. Mahakash is the infinite space. The infinite space is dark. It is as dark as when you close your eyes. In that physical space all the universe arises and sets and is destroyed. Finally, 
What is the result of all the experiences that are going on in the play of consciousness? They are just gone, ending up in pure space. The whole world is an ever-changing state. No form will remain permanently. Finally, all forms will vanish in space and become formless. I am talking directly from my own experience, not from any books. Millions of people, animals, and other beings have come and gone. But the sum total of the universe, has it become more or less? It remains unchanged. They have never become less. They are always there. With all these millions of forms in the world, can my image be left permanently? Presently you have only the feeling of I amness. And because of that feeling, the whole world is manifested. Once the millions of people have gone, what traces are left of them? Let us forget spirituality for the time being. Among all my experiences, I had occasions for joy, happiness, and miseries. What part of the miseries or happiness still remains? One who has transcended the consciousness, or one who has seen the end of this, for such a one, where is the question of any gain or loss? I know full well that this knowingness will not remain. I abide in that no knowing state. So this being the case, where is the question of one's engaging in activity? With such a spiritual orientation, can one be affected by worldly or family life? June 22, 1981, P.M. Both experience and experiencer will disappear. I will not elaborate further. Changes get expressed in the consciousness and so consciousness becomes subtler and subtler. Forms get dissolved. The first step on the road to spirituality is to develop that conviction that I am not the male or the female. Looking outside for light and sound, all disciples undergo some spiritual experience and that itself is bondage. They compare their experiences with others. Those disciples think they are very advanced. They are attracted to the experiences of sound and light, etc., because they identify themselves with the body. They want a shape and a design. Therefore, they revel in experiences which indicate shape and design. You should be like space. If you pay attention to things external to you, you will be carried away. If you are the space and not the body, then at that stage the body does not remain as the body because there is nobody to evaluate the body as body. In Chittakash, you evaluate the world as name and form. But when name and form are dissolved, a dissolution takes place. All forms dissolve in Mahakash. You evaluate a form that is like this or like that. When evaluation is not there, the mind is not there. It is like space. Chittakash is that raw material by which you evaluate whatever you experience or whatever you observe. In the process of becoming more subtle, the external forms are dissolved into Mahakash. No more names and forms. Simultaneously, the process of evaluation and mind functioning stops, dissolves itself into Chittakash. When both Mahakash and Chittakash become still, it is space only. And you are the space. Because of the external body, the I amness is felt. However, in the absence of the body, the I amness is still there without feeling I am. I am ever prevailing. June 23, 1981. Just as you are not the clothes that you wear, similarly, you are not this body. This is the most important step. You will slowly realize you are just like space, because space is the beginning and the end of everything. Suppose you are sick. You want to know all about your sickness. The more serious the sickness, the more you would like to know about it. Similarly, this I amness is also a sickness. Now you must begin to collect knowledge about that. How do you begin? Start with the body. From the body you get the knowledge of I am. In this process you become more and more subtle. 
When you are in a position to witness the knowledge I am, you have reached the highest. In this way you must try to understand and the seeds of knowledge will sprout in you. When you come to the end of the material world knowledge, at that stage you transcend the observer and the observed. That means that you are in a true state of beingness. Thereafter you enter the state of transcending beingness, where the identities of the observer and the observed disappear. Suppose somebody abuses you, and you find out who it is. Is it the body? It is not the body. Then what could it be? Finally you come to the conclusion that it is spontaneously happening out of whatever that body is. You will not attribute it to an individual. When your individuality is dissolved, you will not see individuals anywhere. It is just a functioning in consciousness. If it clicks in you, it is very easy to understand. If it does not, it is most difficult. It is very profound and very simple, if understood right. What I am saying is not the general run of common spiritual knowledge. When you reach a state when body is transcended, mind is transcended, and consciousness is also transcended, from then on all is merely happening out of consciousness, which is the outcome of the body, and there is no authority or doership. When a sound is emanating out of a body, it is not that somebody is talking. It is just words emanating, just happening, not doing. If you understand the basis thoroughly, it will lead you very far, deep, into spirituality. The Absolute alone prevails. There is nothing but the Absolute. The unmanifest manifested itself. That manifest state is Guru, and it is universal. Who is the one who recognizes this body-mind, this I amness? which recognizes the body-mind, is without name and form. It is already there. June 25th, 1981 I am inspired to talk, but I have no energy. But whatever I say will be so profound that very few people will understand. To start with, everything happens in the space of the cosmos, and it results in concrete actions of the worldly space. All this happens spontaneously. There is no author or doership there. At world level, various bodies are formed, and at body level, we encounter the attraction of the body. First of all, our own body, then attraction of the other bodies. Whatever happens in this concrete world, the instruments and the aids come from the space. The raw material comes from the space. The space is there, prior. To the light. When the light is collected together, it reflects as the sun. Since all this is difficult to understand, the best course suggested is to do bhajan. Determination of good or bad is made only through words. Words or sounds are expressions of the space. Only at word level does one think something good or bad will happen. When one identifies with the space, it is the end of good and bad. First of all, you identify something as being good or bad for yourself. Then, in an effort to acquire good or to get rid of the bad, you have invented a god. Then you worship such a god and you do bhajan and you pray to that god for something good to happen to you. June 27th, 1981 What is meditation? To be one with that because of which we know we exist is meditation. There are a number of names which have been given to gods. All of them represent the same thing. They represent this knowledge that one is, this beingness, consciousness. This knowledge does not refer to an individual, but to the sense of presence as a whole. Instead of accepting this knowledge as a total functioning, one wants to cut up the knowledge into bits and pieces taking a part for himself based on some concept. Any knowledge based on a concept is not true knowledge. There is no such thing as an entity. Now you know that you are awake because you are here and you have that knowledge. 
There is nothing else other than this knowledge, no entity. When you are dwelling in this consciousness, you see that you are not doing anything. It is all happening spontaneously. There is no question of your trying to do anything. You cannot try to be yourself because you are yourself. I am concerned about my family. I want them to have spiritual propensities and get awakened spiritually. I try to feed them this knowledge. If they are deserving, whatever has been fed will be received by them. June 28, 1981 The sprouting of Aham Brahmasmi takes place at some subtle place, and when it grows, it grows continuously. What is the meaning of this sprouting? It indicates that I am the Brahman. Then the inspiration, the intuition begins. The deeper meaning of Aham Brahmasmi means an intuitive, inspirational growth from inside. The firm conviction that I am the Brahman. Such a one in whom this growth of Aham Brahmasmi starts might undergo sufferings, but that one will not lose his understanding or this sprouting of Aham Brahmasmi. This is firmly rooted. Aham Brahmasmi means that I am the Brahman. But before saying, I am the Brahman, you are already one with Brahman. Then only will you be able to say, I am the Brahman. It is just like the waking state. After awakening, you might say, I woke up. So the waking state precedes your saying, I woke up. There are two ways of receiving the knowledge. One way is you are taught the knowledge. You receive it externally. Another way is the knowledge grows from inside, intuitively. So far, you have understood yourself by yourself. You have not yet seen yourself. So how can you be convinced of what you are? Whatever you are identifying yourself with at the moment is only the body and the intellect in your body. One has to use the intellect to understand. I have been reading a lot. Maybe it will take some time to try to develop a deeper emotional understanding. To understand what you are and ultimately to identify with the self that you are, you must meet someone who has identified himself with the self and also who has understood the self thoroughly. Have you come across that identity of yours? No, I have seen it in other people. That impels one to try to find it in oneself. When you look at others, that other person is just food essence as yourself. What more understanding do you have? What is the quintessence of what you are, the inner core of you? When you people come here, you feel very satisfied and contented. Why? You feel like that because when you are here, you are under the shade of or you abide in your own consciousness. That means you are in a state which transcends body, mind, and intellect. Since you are in that state, you do not have any form. You do not have any doubts. Therefore, you are in that satisfied state. In that state, whatever sentences you hear will be implanted deeply in you and will not be forgotten. There is no way for you to forget those sentences because they lead you to yourself. What you hear, you will not forget when you leave. Abide in this state of shade, in the self, in the consciousness that you are. Even when you go out, here there is no room for the intellect to play about. Since you do not identify yourself with any form, mind has no avenue for any propagation. The mind subsides in the consciousness. This is space-like, a shade-like state. If you are in that state of beingness, is it necessary to say one's mantra? Suppose you are a woman, and you have not been accepting yourself as a woman. So you are told you are a woman. This is the mantra. I am a woman. I am a woman. When you are convinced you are a woman, are you going to repeat, I am a woman, I am a woman? When you are that, there is no question of choice. Choice is at the level of body-mind, whether to say the mantra or not to say it. When consciousness begins to become aware of itself, one would logically think that it would merge in itself. But so often it slips back into identifying itself with the body. Why? 
Why should consciousness, which is inadequacy, which is sickness, be there at all? To a yani, consciousness has not happened at all. If the consciousness tries to understand itself, it gets stabilized in due course in the Absolute. And when the consciousness gets stabilized in the Absolute, it knows it is like a ghost. It is not real. It is not palpable. You did not know your own existence after you were born. Nine months in the womb and for some time afterwards, that I am so-and-so is absent. When you start recognizing your mother, then you also come to be aware of your own existence. That I amness comes some time later. Mother teaches you, in ignorance, that you are the body and you begin to believe that. Your mind also starts slowly to develop. So right from the beginning, because of ignorance, the Absolute does not know itself. And because of the body, it started knowing that it is I am. Because of the ignorance, you had to ask somebody, Who am I? Otherwise, you would not have asked anybody. Even so-called incarnations, such as Rama, were like this. They had to be taught. The incarnations are just like you. The bondage with the body came because of wrong teaching. And then the guru came and told you that you are not the body. And then you were liberated. That is why all these births are taking place. If you knew of the bondage, you would refuse the birth. But because the I amness is absent, you are trapped. Because the I amness is a quality of the body, later on you come to know that you are and that you are trapped. But once you know, you are liberated. June 30th, 1981. All knowledge is like the son of a barren woman. Presently, there are only beingness and the functioning. The individuality and personality are thrown overboard. There is no personality, so there is no question of birth, life, or death. What remains is only the consciousness without name or form. There is no individuality at all. The form needs a name, but when both are not there, then the consciousness remains only so long as the body is there, but without any individuality. The body is of as much use now as it was prior to the birth and after the death. How do you know me? You know me only on the acquisition of body form, name and form. Do you really see me as I am? I doubt it. Now the conclusion is that the unborn is enjoying the birth principle. That principle that is born took so much time to understand this, and it is the unborn only which prevails. It took so much time for the self to understand the self. We have tied around our necks so many concepts. Death, this I am, etc. Similarly, concepts of good and evil are unnecessary. We have developed these concepts and are caught in them. How does one think about the self-knowledge? Do you abide in the self or in the process do you think of something else? as the self. You are wrapped up and lost in your concepts. For instance, you have a concept about friendship. How long do you keep your friends? You keep them so long as they are useful to you. So long as a friend is of some benefit to you, that's how long you would like to keep that friendship. Now how can I actually derive benefit out of a friend? I as an individual am not there. So how can there be a question of benefit? Benefit to whom? How can there be a question of friendship at all? Anybody who comes here can sit. I will allow him to sit for some time. But later on, I will say, you may leave. Why? Because I have no intention or purpose of having any friendship with that person. Ordinarily, there is some purpose for deriving certain benefits out of an association with another. When you meet someone in friendship, there may be some intention to serve one another. But I have no friends. Even this I amness will not remain as my friend. I am not able to talk any longer. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Previously, I used to welcome people, but now I am not in a position to welcome them. They come, they sit, and they go by themselves. I cannot even extend my hospitality. All my knowledge has gone.
into liquidation. I am unconcerned. 